Okay, so, a few things before we start. Uh, I just, I just um, closed down Revit and reopened it, and that seemed to fix the, the problem I was having. So, just to look through some of those renders that we just sent in the last session. Um, no, that's not it. Okay, so this was one of those re-renders we did where we took an existing daylight factor render and we we picked a particular moment in the year and we resent it as an illuminance render uh, using a clear sky. So in other words, we're having a look now. Um, what's it like in there on a really bright sunny day in the UK? Which you don't get very often. But when you do, that's what it would be like. So as you can see, because we have, we have no shading, we're getting these illuminance values of 60,000 lux in the, in the sun, and then sort of dropping down to 5,000 lux um, in the shadow areas. So, you know, obviously a very, very strong sunlight. I mean, what would be interesting, but I'll do it now, would be to re-render that using a different, a slightly different sky. So let's just, let's just send that with the overcast sky and see if that comes back in time. Okay. And then we had a, another one that we sent, which we, I can't remember now. I think we moved it to three o'clock in the afternoon and we sent that one. And as you can see, you're getting very, very bright sunlight in those spaces. And I think, um, you know, th this gives you some very meaningful data to, to work with as a designer. If you were sat in that bright sunshine trying to work on a laptop, it's probably going to be quite difficult because of the, the sheer brightness. If you compare that with the, the adjacent room, which has some of the shading devices, we're getting a much more kind of lower intensity of direct sunshine. So that's, that's very useful. Then this one here is the daylight factor analysis that we sent, where we limited the scale from 0 to 10%. So it's not giving us any information in the very bright areas because it's maxed out, it's limited at 10%, but it's giving us quite a lot of information about the slightly darker areas in that space. Okay. So those were the ones that I was trying to send through before. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. In the UK, generally, you use a daylight factor, okay? And it goes back to that slide that I was showing before where we have 80 to 85% cloud cover in the UK. So generally, we find as designers the daylight factor using the overcast sky, the daylight factor sky, it's a very useful metric because it simulates this kind of sky that we get a lot of the time. It's overcast. And because it's overcast, it means you can look at one simulation and that will give you a reasonable um, metric for the whole year. The difficulty with using, if we compare, if we compare this is a daylight factor simulation. So it's no particular time of the year. Um, I mean, you always, you always set a time of the year, but it doesn't make a, a huge difference because it's, the sky is so overcast, there's no direct sunshine anyway. So if you have that um, simulation, that gives you a feel for the quality of daylight in that space throughout the year. Um, and we've already talked about daylight factor levels, and I've got some slides coming up in the next session which look at some uh, the, the sort of level quantities you're aiming for. If we compare that with this one, 
which is the luminance render, it's much more difficult to use this as an overview of the building because it's giving us that moment in time. It's giving us that very, very bright sunshine in the middle of summer, much more difficult to use. Now, there are the other skies. So there's the, the overcast sky, the intermediate sky. Generally, in the UK, we just stick to the daylight factor. Okay. If you move, I sort of mentioned this before, but if you were working in a completely different climate zone, if you were working in Thailand, for example, you would not use the overcast sky, you would not use a daylight factor sky, because it would be meaningless. Because in Thailand, you're getting a huge amount of sunshine. So then you would be using the clear sky, uh, or, the, or perhaps the intermediate sky. Okay, but for the UK, the daylight factor sky works perfectly well. Now the other type of daylight simulation, which we're not covering, and it was mentioned in the, in the Principles of Building Physics lecture, on daylight, and which is which is copied into MOL for, for everybody in this class. I did go on to talk a little bit about climate-based daylight simulation. And now that's a completely different type of simulation, much more complex. What you're doing in that kind of simulation is you're simulating the uh, the daylight and the sunlight in that space throughout the air. And your computer will go away and it will render thousands and thousands of simulations to compile the results. Now, we're not covering that. Um, you can't do that in Revit. You can't do that in 3D Max. And I think for our purposes, it's probably just slightly too complex. So we're not covering that. Daylight factor is the main type of analysis we use. Okay. Right. What I want to now just show you before we go back into Revit is now I've explained that I'm not I'm not going to run through 3D Studio Max in the class. Um, we simply don't have time, okay? Because we've introduced some new Revit features this year, we don't have time to be to be uh, running 3D Studio Max. If you're interested and you want to use that, have a look at the video. And this is the kind of output you can get from 3D Studio Max. <clears throat> now, the first thing that's important is you can link your Revit model. So you're not having to export your model, but you can link it so it remains live. Now, what you can do in 3D Max is you can put light meters into the space. So each one of these points is like a mini light meter. And you can put as many as you want and it will give you the exact daylight factor or illuminance at that point in the space. And then it will also give you a color code if you want. Um, so it's slightly, it's slightly better if you want a much more accurate um, simulation, but it's a lot more complicated to achieve it. It will also give you a three-dimensional view, and again, each one of those points is, is like a light meter. Okay? So that's an alternative. It's up to you. You don't have to use it. If you're interested, then you know, invest the time and, and look at that. Okay. <clears throat> so let's go back into Revit and let's look at. Let's look at some ways of now bringing back, bringing those renders, the simulations, bringing that back into a sheet in, in Revit. It's a little bit complex, this. Um, there are quite a few steps involved. I'll take you through it, but you know, as I said earlier, it's up to you. This information. is perfectly good information and you could obviously use that in a report okay but if you want to start to combine that onto a Revit sheet I'll talk you through that so let's start first of all with sheets in Revit a sheet in Revit is like a sheet of paper okay a sheet of paper that you will make a PDF from you can print you can print directly from a sheet but generally 
most people now you make a PDF and then you print from the PDF. Okay, you don't want to be sending huge Revit files to a print shop for printing. You want to send them a PDF which is all packaged up, ready to go. If you start, um, you know, you wouldn't you wouldn't do it. If you started sending your Revit file to a print shop, any references could be lost. Plus, you're giving them all your information which they don't need to have. Okay. So if we go to Sheets and we right-click, right-click on Sheets, New Sheet, and it will ask you for a title block. And at the moment, I've only got one. It's just the Revit sample one. It's called A1 Metric. So let's have that. <clears throat> There's our sheet. You can duplicate this sheet. You can customize it. You can make it your own. Okay. So there's our sheet, blank sheet of paper. Um, Revit will automatically give it a, um, a sheet number. And if we go into the properties of it, we can change that number and we can give it a name. So let's call it um, Level 10 Daylight Analysis. Okay, so we've given it a name um, because all of the fields in the title block are automatic. They will automatically change when you when you type into the properties. Okay. Now, don't please don't submit your work on this title block. So you know it says Autodesk Revit. Um, I haven't got time to go into it, but you can. If you double click on that title block, you can start to change it as you wish. So you can make your own. And I mean, for the purposes of university, you don't need all of this. You know, checked by, approved by, you don't need any of that. So you might just simplify that down. You might just have your name in the bottom corner. Or, you know, it might say just what the class is, okay? So there's our blank sheet. It's got nothing on it. And... The way Revit works is the way to get information onto that sheet is you find one of your views and you drag it, click and drag, Come on. do that again, didn't work. Oh yeah, sorry. You can't place a view. If you already used a view, you can't you can't place it twice. Come on. Okay. So it's placed a view on that sheet. There, there it is. Okay. I'll just undo that because that was just a random a random view. Okay. So, but what we want to do now is we want to prepare some views for putting on this sheet. And if we go back to the one that we've already done, so what we've got on this sheet is we've got some we've got some views that we've rendered previously, and we've got these floor plans. Okay, so let's go back to our sheet. And sorry. So the, the the first thing, which is very easy, is just to add an image. Okay. So if we go to insert along the top and image. So very, very, um, you know, straightforward way of just adding, adding a JPEG, adding an image into a, into a sheet.
So I'll just add one of our images from last week. So there's the image. It's, um, it will hover around until we place it. So let's just place it. Um, there it is. And it's too big, so to scale it, with it selected, we go up to the scale scale button here. And we can either do it graphically or numerically. Let's do it numerically. Let's scale it uh, 50%, so 0.5. And it wants, it's now it needs to know the, the, the point that you want to scale it about. Okay, so it's so it's scaled that image. <clears throat> and let's just add another image quickly. Let's add that one. Okay. If we just move that, if we use the move the move tool here. And we can actually snap, snap on points. Let's just move that down a bit. So we can we can do it roughly, or we can actually type. So if I type in ten, move it down ten. Let's scale it. And this time I'll just scale it graphically, just do this roughly. So we click on a point, which is our base point. We click on a definition point. <clears throat> and we can scale it that way. Okay. So very, very simple there, how to get a few images into a sheet. Okay, the next steps are a little bit more complex, I'm afraid. So the first thing is we need to bring in our rendered floor plan. And we need to underlay that under one of our building plans in Revit. Okay. What we need to do, we need to create what's called a drafting view. So a drafting view in Revit is a view where you put non-three-dimensional information. So you're putting line work, you're putting images, you're putting text. So we create a new drafting view. And let's call it um, level 10 daylight factor option A. Uh, let's have it at 1 to 100. So there's our blank drafting view with nothing in it. And we now need to bring in the image into that drafting view. And if I just, if you just look over on the right here, that's the drafting view that we've just created. Okay? And it's it's considered very differently from a plan view <clears throat> because a plan view is three-dimensional information. Okay, so let's bring in our image, insert image. So let's bring in that one, place it, ZE for zoom extent. So there's our image. Um, okay, so that's, that's fine for now. And if we go back to our sheet, so WT for Windows tile, just close, oops, wrong one. Just open our open our sheet again, windows tile, ZA, zoom all. So there's our, there's our sheet we've created, and there's our drafting view. I'm just going to hit save. Okay, so we now need to get that drafting view onto our sheet and start to assemble this, uh, this page. 
So we go and find, find the drafting view that we've created, which was this one. Drag it, click and drag it onto the sheet. And it will, as always, it will continue to float until I press, until I click it. And then I've, so I've placed it. Okay, it looks too big to me. So it's quite handy when you're doing this to keep both views open. So the view on the left, I like to think of it just as a sheet of paper. And the view on the right is the kind of content that you're adding onto the paper. So that was too large. If we go back into our drafting view, let's change that to 1 to 200. That looks more like the kind of scale that we want on our page. I'm just going to drag that and, and position it roughly up here. Okay, and I'll just zoom in a bit on that. Okay, what Revit will do, whenever you bring in a view into a sheet, it will automatically give it a title and it will show you the scale by default. And often that's very useful because it it's very clear what you've got. Okay, we can change that, but for now, I'll just leave all of that in place. Zoom extents. Okay, so we've brought in our daylight simulation, and you know, as it stands, that's okay. As a sheet, that's you know, that's a reasonable sheet. You've got three dimensional views, you've got plan view. You could then, of course, add, add some notes onto that. But let's say we just want to add the detail of the plan over the top of that view. So what we'll do, we need to, we need to create that view. So if we go to our level 10 view, let's maximize that. That's our basic plan view in the model, OK? So we want to bring this view onto that sheet and we want to drop it over the top. So first thing we'll do is we'll make a duplicate because we don't want to be bringing our only plan view and messing around with it. So if we right click on that view in the project browser, duplicate view, I've mentioned this before, you've got duplicate, you've got duplicate with detailing and you've got duplicate as dependent. Duplicate will only duplicate three-dimensional information. Duplicate with detailing will also copy any text, any section lines, anything which is not three-dimensional. Duplicate as a dependent will link the two views together. So if you change one, the other one will change also. We're just going to go for duplicate with detailing. And let's rename it. So we can do that either by right-clicking on the view up here, or we could have gone into the properties of that view and renamed it here, view name. So let's do it here. Let's call that level 10 daylight factor overlay option A. Okay, so we've renamed it. There's our view. Let's just clean this up a little bit before we bring it onto the sheet. So we'll switch off the shadows. We don't want those on. Um, for our purposes, we probably don't want these section lines on. So if we click on a section, right click, hide in view category, that will hide all the section lines in the view. Let's say we don't want these room, maybe we don't want these room names on. Click on one. Oops, sorry. Right click, hide in view category. And the room names have disappeared. Okay. So that's looking, that's looking quite neat. The thing to bear in mind is 
all you're doing here is altering the graphic appearance. You're not actually altering the 3D file, you're just altering the graphics. So there's our view, WT, Windows Tile. And let's just close a few things that we don't need anymore. WT, ZA. So there's our sheet of paper on the right now. And we want to get this plan over the top of the rendering. So we go back to our project browser. And that's the view. Level 10, Daylight Factor Overlay, Option A, we called it. Click that, drag it, let go, and it's brought it into our sheet. Okay, let's just drop it there. And let's just max, oh no, no, let's just, it's too big for that sheet, clearly. So let's go back into our view over here. Let's change its scale, 1 to 100. Now you may notice, you may be thinking, but I changed the, the raster image to 1 to 200. But the thing to bear in mind is that that image, that raster image I've brought in, is not to scale, because it's defined purely by how many pixels we, we, we rendered it in our render settings. So that's not to scale. So let's just maximize that window. Okay, there's our, um, there's our plan, there's our rendering. If we drag that plan halfway over, you see what it does is it now is obscuring the render. Just zoom in there. So I've dragged it over the top, you can't see the simulation anymore. Okay, what we need to do is just hide the flaws in the model, and that will allow us to see it. Okay, what you can do when you're in a sheet view like this, if you click on any of your views and then you right click, activate view, you can actually start editing that view even though you're in the sheet browser. So I can now start to edit this view. So if I hit VV, Visibility Graphics, and switch off floors, okay? Switch off the floors. Now we can see through the floors, over through to our um, simulation, okay? So now we just need to do a little bit of tidying up, really. Now, I'm still active in that view, because I've activated that view, so I can't do anything till I come out of that. So right-click, deactivate view. And now we're back into our sheet, okay? In AutoCAD terminology, this is like paper space, okay? Um, right, I want to do a few things. One thing is I want to get rid of this title for our image. So if I click on that view and go to its properties over here, we have choices for that viewport. So if I click here, we have no title, title no line, title no line with detail ref, title with line. I'm going to click on no title, and the title disappears. Don't want to see that. And now all of that is customizable. You can make your own titles if you wish. Okay. Now let's drag our plan view over the top. And as you can see, it doesn't quite match up. And that's simply because the raster image, as I say, is not to scale. It just depends on how many pixels you, you rendered. So it's a little bit of a it's a sort of a, a little bit annoying that you have to just do this bit of rescaling here, but at the moment it's the only way to do it. Uh, so, if we click on our on our um, simulation and again right click, activate view, we're now able to edit that image. 
So if I select the image, and again, we will scale it. Okay. And let's scale it graphically. So I'm going to try, let's try, let's try from that point. We'll just do it roughly at first. So we've done a sort of rough scale there. That's reasonably accurate. If we just zoom in, it's not quite. We just deactivate the view and then we'll just move it. Do that. I had the wrong, I had the wrong thing selected. Okay, let's just move that again. Let's do it the other way. Oops. So I'm, I'm rushing a little bit there, but we've just placed the plan view over the rendering. Okay. Now, unfortunately, at the moment, you have got to do that slightly manual process. Okay. For daylight factor, there's no way around that. Um, now, what it does mean is that your the benefit at the moment is that your plan view is still live information. But your, your JPEG image, your simulation image, is not live. So what you would need to do is if you were then going to change that view and re-render it, you'd have to bring the image in again. But what you can do, now that we've got that positioned, if I go back to our drafting view, uh, wrong one, that one, Okay, so we now know that is the right size for our building. What you can do, if you go to your architecture tab here, okay, um, what you can do is use the reference plane tools. Now the reference planes, they, they create sketch lines, they define reference planes which, which are invisible, they're just like guides just to help you position things. So what we could do now is draw some reference planes to accurately define the position and the size. Let's just do it like that. Of your your simulation image. Okay, so we're just putting a few references in there just doing it quickly okay um, and what it means now is if we bring in if we were to repeat that process and bring in another image we can use those reference planes to accurately size it okay so you know as I say it, it's a little bit sort of fiddly the way you have to do that but I think the, the benefit is that you get these slightly better images where you have both the rendering and the, the view. Now if we go back if we go back to our other view, the sheet that I prepared earlier, to produce the, um, the, the sort of rendered plan view, it was exactly the same process as, as above. Okay? Exactly the same, except bringing in the other image. And now I just need to show you one more thing. This is back in our drafting view. And 
just want to show you if you want to crop the view. So if you look, what I've got here is the view has brought in the daylight factor scale with it. And on the what I've done on this sheet is I've cropped off the um, the key, <clears throat> and then I've brought that key in as a separate image, which I can place where I like. So just to show you how to do that, we go back into our drafting view. And we go to our annotate tab at the top. Okay, and we go under the region tool and we go to a masking region. And the process is it's now prompting you to draw a line. So it's activated all the draw tools here. Okay, so if we just select the rectangle here, and let's draw a rectangle around the part that we want to keep. Okay, and if we now just draw a rectangle around the bits that we want to mask, then when we click on the finish edit mode, it will automatically keep Keep the elements that you wanted, and it's masking out all the other elements. So it's just like a mask, okay? And if I deleted that mask, everything is still there. Okay? And then just one last thing on that, and then we'll, we'll finish in a minute for a break. Um, what I don't want is that masking region has got lines on the edge of it. So if I... If I select it and then click on Edit Boundary and I select, click and drag to select all of those boundary lines, I can then change those lines to be invisible up here under the line style. So I change those to invisible lines, click Accept. So we still have the masking region, but it doesn't have. Um, black lines defining it. So if we now go back into our view, back into our sheet, sorry, sheet 102, so we've now masked off the key in that sheet. Okay. So that's the, that's the basic steps for bringing that daylight factor simulation view and overlaying it as a plan. It's also, let's go back, it's also the same steps for bringing in the kind of rendered view, and it would be the same process if you wanted to do a section view, where you wanted to have a render with a section overlaid over the top. Okay, what I will point you to, but I'm not going to cover it, because it's not really so useful for the UK, there is a plugin for Revit now, which is a daylight plugin. If you go to Analyze, I think this plugin now comes native with Revit 2015, and you have to install it as a plugin for Revit 2014. Now I'm not going to I'm not going to teach you, but I'll just point you to a few videos if you're interested. It's interesting because it shows the way things are going. So now under the Analyze tab. We actually have some light analysis tools, and these are um, designed specifically for the American LEED accreditation. So they're not so useful for the UK because they're, they're using a very different sky model. What's great about those tools is when you hit run analysis here, it will simulate the whole building and it will automatically create over here all the views on a floor-by-floor -floor basis for that simulation. So it will do all that sort of manual work we've just had to do. It does it for you. But it does not do it for a daylight factor. It does it for the lead assessment, which is based on illumination, based on illuminance, sorry. 
So it's kind of, you know, it's useful tools. Um, and a few, few of the students did use it last year, but it, it's just not quite so specific to the, to the sort of northern uh, temperate climate, okay? More suited to a, to a much kind of sunnier sky with less cloud cover. But I'll, I'll put those videos on YouTube for, the, for that plug-in. And again, it's up to you. If you're interested, you can have a play with it. It's very quick. Um, and, you know, the, the, the good thing is that the results, you get the results much quicker, much easier. Okay. Right. So we'll finish there for now. We'll have a break. And then we're going to come back and we're going to, we're going to start to bring in integrated shading design. Okay. Uh, I've got a few minutes now, so if there's any immediate questions, I can take anything now. In the sheet. Um, good question. What I'm finding is it's quite important that you bring them in in the right order. Uh, now I think there is a way of moving the order, and I've tr I was trying to find it yesterday, but I couldn't immediately find the way of changing the order. So I ended up just having to bring them in in the correct. Um, I'm sure there is a way, but I. You, you find it, you tell me. Okay, I couldn't, I couldn't find it. I'm sure you can. Good, good question. Yes? So we can see this layer, but we don't, as a picture, only this layer. I mean, we duplicated these two layers. Yeah. Can we see it as a picture? Sorry, sorry, can you not, don't talk, don't talk. Sorry. Yeah, I'm talking about this layer. This one? Yeah. yeah. When we finish everything, can we see this separated from the other as a picture? Um, you can, as a sheet, you can always export as an image, okay. and it will export the whole, the whole sheet as a JPEG. Um, or if you go into print, the sort of more normal way of doing it is to print that to, as a PDF. Um, and then you can extract JPEGs from a PDF. Okay, so if I want only this part, put it in, in design, yep. I can do it. So I have to do a sheet separated from the other without the out, uh, without the layout, sorry? Um, well, if you're doing it in InDesign, you could... You've got choice, I suppose. You could assemble the two layers yourself in InDesign. Um, otherwise, um, otherwise, you'd probably have to follow this, this process and then save as a, as a JPEG. Um, and then that JPEG you could have linked into InDesign. Um, I don't think there's any way to automate... Revit to InDesign. Um, can't see how you would you do that. I mean, what you could do is let's say let's say you already had that JPEG linked into InDesign, and then you re-rendered it in Revit. As long as you exported that JPEG with the same file name in the same location on your computer. InDesign would immediately recognize that the link has changed and you could update it. So you could work like that. Um, I mean, I, I kind of, I'm only showing this image, you know, this is just very quick, me, you know, this is just me quickly assembling something. But, you know, I think it, if you were clever with this and you start to work into this, it's a really nice basis for producing some really sort of quality drawings you know so if you had that image and you took that into say Photoshop and started manipulating it playing it the fact that you're bringing in that render I think is, is you know could offer a lot of potential okay any more questions yeah um, if I change the, the layout of the 
If you, yeah, th this is the, let me just show you. The, the floor plan, if I just close a few, let me just close a few things down. Um, okay, so the floor plan is live. So if I, um, let me just delete, if I just delete, let me zoom in here a minute. Okay, so when I select that wall in that view, it is selected in the sheet view. If I delete that wall, it's deleted in the sheet view. So the plan, the plan is live. Okay, but what is not live is the JPEG underneath it, and that's where um, just undo that. That's where you have to then manually go back through the cloud render to re-render it. Now the, the the benefit of the the plugin using the lead analysis is you still have to re-render it, but it it just removes that process where you have to bring the images in. Okay. But as I say, it's just it's just not so appropriate for the UK. Now I would hope by next year, Revit will have improved this. So this manual step of bringing the image in, I would hope they have they're doing that automatically. You know, I would expect they will. So then you'll be at the point where you just click you just click on simulate, and it will do it. And when I if I delete that window, it will it will automatically update. But it's just not quite there yet. Um, but you know, I still think it's a it's a quick process. Um, now, as I've said, if you want, you don't have to do any of that business in Revit, overlaying the plan over the JPEG. You could, you could just use that. And for daylight factor analysis, that's good. I mean, you can you can see the walls because they come out in blue. You can see the windows, but obviously there's no there's no line work as such. But it's you know it's still a good um, uh, you know graphical view of the data. But if you want, yeah, if you want the line work, you have to overlay it in Revit or in in InDesign. But I suppose the benefit of overlaying it in Revit is that at least the plan is live. So if I if I drag that wall. It will, it will drag it in in plan. If you're if you're working in InDesign, obviously you can change your Revit model, and InDesign won't know about it. Okay. So it's you know I think that there've been some huge improvements in the last few years, but I think it will still continue to get better. Okay. <laughs>